Alright. Hi everybody. Hi. Welcome back to our Google Hangout um, speaker series for Vita Vegan Con 3. We're meeting with a lot of our speakers and just chatting with them about their class and what they're up to, what they're excited about for Austin. I'm Janessa. I'm Michelle. That's Jess. Hello, I'm Jess. And today we have got Joni Marie here with us. She is a third time returning speaker. We're so excited to have her. She brings tons of knowledge and energy and enthusiasm and awesomeness. Um, she's gonna her class topic at Vegan Team is cookbook writing from concept to proposal to testing to editing to print. So anybody who wants to write a cookbook, Joni's written I think about one thousand and four. So she should have a lot of good advice. Um, to share with everybody. So hi, Joni. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Everybody. Thank you for having me. So Joni, where are you? <laughs> I'm in my car in Laguna Beach. It's like 80 degrees by the beach and beautiful right now, so I'm sorry for all of you that are in crappy weather. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm wearing a hat because I'm soaking wet and my shoes are wet. Oh. But we've had really nice weather here, so yeah. It's good for gardens, I hear. It is good for gardens. <laughs> um, so we just noticed that you changed your name on Instagram. What's up with that? Um, regular Joni was my name before I had a blog, before I had anything, um, and I. So a live journal. Yes, <laughs> it was. I think my live journal. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured I might as well like. Get it? No, I didn't know you could change it. I just found that out, so I changed it, and I didn't have to change anything else. And everybody that was following me before is still following me, so I just wanted to be me. So. Aww, I like it. Well, Joni, let's get real. I heard you were at Expo West. In fact, I saw photos that evidence this. Tell us all about it. Expo West is incredible. It was my first year going. Um, I went Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and wow. they don't mess around in that place. They do not mess around. It, I guess this was the biggest year ever. There was over 70,000 people there. Um, but the amount of vegans and the amount of vegans that represented this year was incredible. We had, like, meetups throughout the whole weekend. Um, new products, new people to meet. It's fun to put names to faces to personas online. It was really cool. Um, gosh, so many new vegan products. I mean, most so people know. About... Give us a couple of your favorites, please. Yeah, there was, um, you know, everybody knows about the new roast cheese and the new Dea stuff. I tried to find, like, smaller companies that were coming out with oh, funner yeah. stuff. Uh, my favorite thing I found was the Banana Wave banana milk. I'm so <laughs> excited about that. Banana milk. <laughs> Oh, I can hear you. Did you, does, is it banana milk like a banana pudding, like a liquidy banana pudding? Kind of. It was really thin compared to a smoothie, but thick compared to most non-dairy milks. So, so it's like viscosity, but in yeah. a way. <laughs> does it make you think about other fruit milk? <laughs> I, well, I can't, I'm sorry, I lost you on that last one. I was oh. just wondering, does it make you think about other fruit milks from the fruit basket of the world? Of fruit. Because right? everybody does just um, nuts and seeds and grains. Why not bananas? Why not? I don't know whatever. I don't know what other fruit would work for a milk. Maybe, well, coconut. Duh. Well, okay. Yeah, apple milk, no. We have a new uh, cookbook idea. Stale <laughs> milk. <laughs> Maybe a milk. Yeah, that's cool. I'm excited about the banana milk. Don't. No. Um, I really also am really excited about Upton's new jackfruit. Right? How was it? Really good. It takes like, <laughs> hours off your check time. Cool. Oh, we lost. I feel like we're frozen. I know. <laughs> hey, Wendy, it right. happens. This is free. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so you just uh, got through with a uh, vegan street fair as well, um, where you sold out of your tacos crazy fast. Congratulations. Thank you. That was 
people from coming. It was wow. out of control. It was so inspiring to think that 10,000 people came out for a very, it was the very first ever event that they did. So that was pretty, it was pretty awesome. It's amazing. How did you get connected to the people running it? Um, it's uh, the Veg, Jess from the Veg. Um, she was running it and, and I belonged to one of her groups on Facebook and she was like promoting it. I was like, I have to get in on this because it's LA and I need to be part of that scene, man. <laughs> awesome. I think your tacos were probably the most photographed. I, I mean, I think I saw so many pictures of your tacos. And when I think about the street fair, I think about your tacos. Everybody uh, loves them. I, did, I sold out and I felt horrible. I had to walk out and there was like 50 people in my line. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I put the recipes for them up on my blog so people can make them at home. Awesome. And think of all the people who you introduced to your tacos who maybe weren't vegan because those people couldn't have all been vegan. I I my estimate was like maybe twenty five percent of those people were vegan. Wow. Other people said forty to fifty percent. But I think it was a low percent. Uh, and that's what was most exciting because now all these people were exposed to vegan foods and Hopefully we'll be able to do another event soon, and that'll be awesome too. Beer Fest coming up. Yeah, that's great. What are you doing there? Drinking. <laughs> Drinking. I don't know if you have like a pretzel cart. I don't know. Or pretzel taco cart. No, pretzel not work. Cart. Drinking. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> There were also um, a lot of omnivore restaurants at the street fair um, that were serving vegan food, and some people had a problem with that. But your point is that it's just it's it's good. Yeah, it really it really is great that I mean three of the most beloved vegan establishments in LA not vegan restaurants, and that's Block Bend and. Golden Brewery and they have some of the vegan food and they're not even vegan restaurants. And I've never seen anybody complain about that. So I'm not sure where the animosity came towards these non vegan establishments selling vegan food because, in my opinion, if you can offer it, maybe not even order it at their restaurants or make it more available for us, make it more available for more people, I just don't really see the problem. So Fortunately, that didn't manifest into anything at the actual street fair, even though there was a lot of talk on the internet. It didn't manifest into anything. And look, 10,000 people showed up, so it really didn't hurt anything at all. That's awesome. Right. I like to think awesome. of everybody going and being like, oh, wait, this food is delicious. I'm going to shut my yeah. mouth and eat mm -hmm. when I blow my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I, uh, tell us what the Long Beach vegan scene is like. Is there a lot of vegan food there? How close is it to L.A.? Tell us everything. If there's no traffic, we're about a half hour away from most of LA. Um, and about five years ago, there was barely any vegan options at all. And now we've got at least four all vegan restaurants. Wow. And then lots of other restaurants are starting to just offer lots of vegan options. My favorite breakfast stop, stop growing up now has a vegan menu. So I'm super excited about that. Um, there's a all vegan ahimsa. There's all vegan Korean barbecue. There's I love vegan Thai. You know, um, oh, I just went to Happy and Sushi yesterday, and that's the all vegan place. Up, and they're all you know. Long Beach is big, but it ain't as big as LA, so you can get everywhere in town within 20 minutes. That's awesome. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> yeah, I lived there about eight years ago, and there was nothing. Like absolutely yeah. nothing. So that's awesome that it's growing that yeah. fast. So where's your favorite yeah, place to hang out in Long Beach? 
Pardon? Jody, where is your favorite place to dine out in Long Beach these days? Your very favorite. I'm going to have to go with, it's a non-vegan establishment that has a vegan menu and it's it's called the Potholder. And it's just a greasy breakfast spoon type, greasy spoon breakfast place. And they've got this, they've got a vegan menu. They've also got some gluten-free options. But they've got these potatoes and their potatoes are just incredible. Like a breakfast potato hash with avocado and you can get soy riso on it and all kinds of veggies. It's so good. That's my favorite. Oh, um. That sounds incredible. It's well, good. Um, let's talk about the let's talk about the healthier side of things. Side of things. It looks like that you were participating in the Engine Two Challenge. How did that go? How did you get involved with that? And how was that experience? The Engine Two Challenge was something that was being sponsored by Whole Foods, and a lot of you guys already know I do work at Whole Foods, so I led the Engine Two cha Challenge at my store which was a good inspiration for me to try to clean up my diet for a little while, especially knowing all these fun events were coming later in the year. So get myself ready. It was, um, it was really not as hard as I thought it was going to be. At first I was like, oh, man, no oil, no salt, no sugar. Ah. Yeah, I don't know. You guys know my recipes. They are not Engine 2 friendly. So. And we love you for that. <laughs> So it was, it was difficult at first, but once I got the hang of it, you just got to learn how to play with natural foods and their natural fats, um, tahinis and avocados and nuts and, and things like that. And just really, it's not a no-fat diet by any means. It's just a no-added-fat diet. So it's fun. I posted all the... What's the weirdest thing you learned? The the weirdest one? You, learned? you know what? The weirdest thing I learned was that there's more salt in a blueberry muffin than in a bag of potato chips. But because I don't understand. Well, think of it. Potato chips are cooked in oil, and then the salt's put on afterwards. So you taste it on your tongue because it's on the outside of the chip. The salt is baked into blueberry muffins, so the sodium content's way higher, and you don't taste it as much. Wow. That is some dangerous information. I feel uncomfortable. Yeah. It was no, very... I can use the potato chips I want, and I'm fine. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you have a favorite recipe that you made that you were surprised by? Um, yeah, just surprised by how good it tasted, or that's made its way into your rotation at all? Yeah, it did. Um, I was making um, this like macaroni and peas with um, the sauce I made with carrots and cashews and, you know, some almond milk and all those goodies. Um, but the carrots, I never thought to put carrots in there because I'm always looking for, I don't know, new new veggies to throw in things. So that was a fun recipe. I ate that for quite a few days. But really I was made out of bowls, lots of bowls and lots of sauces. Can you eat nutritional yeast on the Engine 2 diet? Yes. Okay. Yes, definitely. All right. <laughs> well... Yeah, okay. So, Joni, the big topic at hand, let's talk VVC. Thank you again yes. for joining us. We want to hear from you. What have, what have you learned at VVC? I really learned community. I think um, just meeting so many different people and making connections that now I have for sure, lifelong friends that I have met at these events um, with so many different perspectives on so many different, like, viewpoints and lifestyles within our lifestyle. And it was so amazing. Um, the first year was just epic. It was just like, oh, my gosh, we're all here. Oh, and what's that? And then the second year, we just got really deep, and we got emotional, and we were crying, and we were <laughs> hugging, and... And it was just so, like, more intense. So this year, I don't even know how it's going to be. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what are some classes that stood out to you that you attended? Um, you know, I try to do a well-rounded, like, I want to know, like, the technical stuff. I want to learn, like, the ethical stuff. And then I want to all learn, like, from people who just want to talk about feeling, and so I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed learning about like um, the oversharing uh, about oversharing on the internet. That was really interesting to me because I tend to do that. Um, 
thank goodness I don't have kids and I'm not embarrassing them. <laughs> um, I also really enjoyed like um, the the body issues segments that we had last year. That was really those panels were really great. Um, Marianne and uh, Jasmine, of course, listening to there was amazing. Um, I cannot say that I ever went to any panel that I didn't think was amazing. Aww. Well, we think you are amazing, and we are so excited that you're bringing you just like years and years of experience of cookbook writing to your class. Can you tell us what's in store for All Things Cookbooks with Joni? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm working on cookbook number, I think, 11 right now. So, yeah. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> a new process every single time. However, there are some, every time I do it, I'm like, last time we did this and it worked better. So I really want um, people to get that anybody can do it. It's just whether or not you want to do it and whether or not people want what you have to offer. And if they do, then let me show you how to get it from, from an idea in your head out to testing and then how to propose to your publisher and how to lay out your chapters. I mean, really just how to make a book that people want to read because I get a lot of feedback and I want to take that and make every, I hope that every book I write is better than the last one that I wrote because I take in the feedback that I get from readers and testers and my publisher and of course sales, whether or not the books are even selling and then, um, take that and put it into the next one with that in mind. So hopefully everybody will get something out of it. And you've done everything. Like, you've self-published before. You have done every single job it takes to get from your head to your reader's hands. And just yeah. The and I would totally self-publish again. I think that's a great option for people. So I will definitely touch on that. Awesome. Well, tell us a little bit, um, what are you excited about for the next BBC outside of your class? Have you heard anything? Do you have any new or returning speakers that you can't wait to, you know, like, get your arms around and hug? I, yeah, definitely. I want to I wanna hug all day Brian Patton. I just want to hug that guy, and I want to take him. I'm so excited. Um, also, I'm really excited about Jackie Sobon's class because she's like the social media maven and she knows what she's talking about. So I'm super excited to take her class. Um, always, I'm going to take as many classes as I can as long as they're not at the same time as mine. Are you, so have you heard about our Vegan Bazaar this year and how we're doing things a little bit differently? So rather than have exhibitors... Um, exhibiting during a conference. We're having everybody on Friday, so this way all the attendees will really get time to meet with the exhibitors and vendors, and the, it's open to the public this for the first time. So it's going to be really fun. So what are you most excited about for that? Well, I will be attending that for certain, and I'm um, also Fairwinds is going to represent at the Bazaar, too, so yeah. I'll be at that table. Yeah, and uh, I think J.L. Fields will be at the Fairwinds table. I'm not sure who else yet is on that schedule, so we're excited about that. And I'm excited to meet all the vendors. I love that kind of stuff, especially if I don't know what who exactly is on the list yet, but I'm assuming that you'll have some local Austin peeps there too. So yeah. I'm excited. And food trucks. Indeed. <laughs> yes. Very excited about food trucks. <laughs> so you were in Austin last year on your book tour, right? You stopped in Austin. So what are you most excited about coming back to Austin? Mainly I'm asking what tacos are you excited to eat, but we can also discuss other things as well. Believe it or not, I didn't eat that many tacos when I was there last time. Um, I ate the breakfast tacos from Whole Foods, so I'm really excited to get breakfast tacos and lunch tacos and dinner tacos and dessert tacos from anywhere that will sell them to us. I'm very excited about that. Um, last time I was there, I went to Counterculture. That was really fun and really good. Um, of course, I went to Capital City Bakery. Um, that was really good. Um, I wasn't there for very long, only two or three days. So mm -hmm. now I'm looking forward to having a whole week to spend in Austin. Excellent. And by the time we're down there, I don't I don't know about their timetable, but there might even be a voodoo donuts down there by then. 
I know they're planning on building one. I just I heard about it yesterday. So. Um, in August. In August? Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> How does Sione Marie Newman do tacos differently? Oh, well, I don't I don't think my tacos are, de they're definitely not Mexican flavored. And they're definitely <laughs> not like Tex-Mex or anything like that. I try to fuse all kinds of flavors together. And that's the Southern California in me, I guess. That's the way everybody around here does things. So I like to just mix up different flavors from different countries and throw them on some tortillas. Yeah. Yeah. Corn or flour? Corn. Always corn. Always corn. Awesome. Get the little tiny ones. The little ones. We love the baby corn tortillas. They're the best. I like flour tortillas for burritos. Mm -hmm. Flour tortillas have no place on a taco. <laughs> You know, I agree with you, but last time I went in Austin, I, there were smaller flour tortillas for the tacos, and I surprisingly found myself liking those as well. So my eyes have been open to the I'll give it a chance. I'm okay with a breakfast taco. Most breakfast tacos, a flour tortilla is this. Mm -hmm. All right. It's not offensive. I'm open-minded. <laughs> um, yeah, um... Uh, we're going to talk about some new stuff that's going on, and one new stuff that's going on with you, your podcast, which you record in your car. That's awesome. <laughs> this car. Um, yeah. This is the silliest thing I think I've ever done, but I'm having such a fun <laughs> <time>. It's great. <laughs> I, um, I... I drive so much. I'm always in my car. I drive at least an hour each way to work, plus wherever I'm like road tripping or driving. I'm driving so much, and I feel like it's wasted time, so I might as well do something with it. So I just talk to myself <laughs> and record it. <laughs> and if I'm lucky, I have a passenger, and I interview them, and it's fun. It's just silly. The sound quality is horrible because it's recorded on my <laughs> But it's just, it's for fun, and it's silly, and I'm having a blast with it. Hopefully people don't take it too seriously, but hopefully they enjoy it if they listen to it. That's awesome. I love it recording while you're driving. <laughs> That's incredible. We always have the best thoughts when we're driving, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what other new projects do you have going on? I just wrapped up... Um, I just wrapped up the complete guide to vegan substitutions number two with uh, Celine, and we're just starting work on something new that's not official yet, um, but it does have something to do with like nuts and seeds and stuff, um, and hopefully that'll come to fruition soon. And just, you know, I'm going to keep trying, my new mantra this year is to say yes, so anytime someone tells me I should go to an event or something, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to do it. So. Awesome. What is one of, can you give us, I don't want to spoil everything, but we'd love to know, give us a sneak peek of what's a new substitute that you're excited about. I'm not excited, that is tickling your fancy. <laughs> yes. Okay, so in the new, in the new book for some students, we have a whole chapter on bacon. It gets its own chapter this time, and we've made bacon out of everything. So, from, yeah, but you can make anything in baking days, so that was really fun, um, but I'm pretty excited about our egg chapter, especially the savory egg chapter, because I think I did a pretty darn good job of getting a nice jiggly egg yolk, and that's kind of fun. <laughs> nice! Cool. <laughs> it I jiggles. Yeah. It <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, the coolest new substitute that's, like, all the rage over, like, the last week has been this new bean juice meringue. Yeah, right? I was going to ask you if you tried that. No, but I've been following every single one of those posts. I joined the group on Facebook and everything. I'm like, what is this? This is cool. It looks beautiful. I, I would like to taste it. That's <laughs> for sure. I, yeah. I, I need to make it because when – back before I was vegan, I used – that was my jam, those little egg cookies. Now, I used to sit in the bathtub and eat an entire tub of them. So if I could make those again, I will be in trouble. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, do you have any questions for us about Vita Vegan Con or Austin or about projects or 
Jess's sweet hair or anything? I am super excited. I want to know why we can't have Vita Vegan Con like three or four times a year. <laughs> that would be yeah. awesome. It's short One for every season. <laughs> also, we need to have jobs. <laughs> this I understand for sure. I'm excited because we're road tripping there from yeah. SoCal. That's awesome. Are you going to record the entire time and post it online? Um, we're going to record a ton of stuff while we're driving and post it. Um, it'll be fun. It's me and Jackie and Caroline. Yeah. <laughs> that is a crazy girl right there. How fun. Please send us stuff so we can, like, post it for you, too. So we can be like, oh, okay. everybody, I'm sure. Because there's, like, a number of road trips that we've been hearing about. Yeah. Like, right. and we're yeah. really trying to encourage these, like, Peter Beaton Con road trips. Of course, we'll be too busy to look at anything then, but... We'll catch you. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, would you like to share with everybody where we can all find you online on your various social media platforms and blogs? Yeah, I my website is justthefood.com. That's my blog. Um, on Instagram and on Twitter, I'm at Joni Marie Newman, and on Facebook, I'm Joni Cooks Vegan. Perfect. Thank you. And we're at vitaveganCon.com. Um, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram as well. And thank you so much for joining us, Joni. We love you. We're so happy to have you back for a third year in a row. You're incredible. And oh, we're so excited yeah. to see you in May. Two thumbs up. <laughs> thank, thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.